Hello everyone. So today let us take a look at uh, not only really take a look at but uh, I just want to share an approach that I follow. Now we as uh, Jira administrators or consultants, people who help others get the most out of Jira, we have to do a lot of things. We are expected to know a lot of things. And one such thing is uh, understanding how to fetch data from Jira programmatically and of course if you if you're on server then uh, you can use rest api or you can use uh, using script now for jira you can write your own script and you can dump things maybe to a csv file based on whatever processing you might need to do or you can probably use just the rest api on on cloud because you anyways have option to use rest api and i have on this particular channel I don't know how many videos where I talked about doing a lot of things with Jira by fetching the information and by maybe uh, using an endpoint to update things in Jira, adding a work log and there are a lot of wonderful things that you can do using REST API. Now, whenever I whenever I have to test something, let us say a new endpoint or if, if I have to maybe work for a client and I'm supposed to build something for them or proof that something can be done or maybe build some integration. Uh, my f my uh, my approach is to do something very quickly and prove that it can be done and then, then of course modify it, enhance it if, if, if you need to. And if I have to look at all the integration work that I have done in the past, if I'm not really using script runner for Jira, then I am in most cases using nothing but my own uh, shell script. Now there are a lot of wonderful things about uh, shell scripting and that is what I wanted to talk about in this video and I think it is r a really good skill to acquire because if you can uh, write a simple shell script to fetch things from Jira and dump it somewhere, it could be maybe a small script which is running on the server, maybe you can set up a cron job that will do something. Maybe it will pull things from Jira and then it will dump something somewhere. Now, let me show you a couple of examples. One such uh, requirement could be that uh, we have to get the list of all the all the projects in Jira. And by the way, I have shown this in the past, so I'll not really go through the actual script. I just want, want to give you some ideas about uh, uh, what could be a good skill to acquire what could be uh, a wonderful thing to learn if you are a Jira consultant or a Jira administrator or maybe a Jira developer or maybe any developer and you want to do things with Jira. So uh, I usually keep my repository of a lot of scripts. And by the way, I have shared, uh, I guess, most of these scripts online. So I'll share the link to my repository. So let us say you want to get the list of projects. So this is the... Um, the, the, this is the uh, script which I have and uh, I'll talk about few things here and uh, I'll probably uh, just run the call command. So let, let us run this call command and uh, let us see if uh, this works. I'll not really run the whole script. Okay, so this is hopefully the script that will run and it will give you this JSON. Now, uh, good thing about uh, Good thing about your own script is you have a lot of utilities in Linux. Like one such utility is uh, JQ, which is a JSON parser. And it will actually give you this nice, wonderful um, JSON that you can read from the terminal. And uh, when you pass some additional arguments, you can actually make it look like uh, maybe a comma separated because you can, uh, using JQ, you can parse the J JSON. So, that is of course a great thing because otherwise you will have to, to write your own script. In almost all the languages, there, are, there is some kind of a way to parse JQL, but you can also do that from terminal. And uh, the script that I have is basically fetching the list of all the projects, which I can actually straight away run and I have the list of projects uh, immediately. Now this is wonderful because I can then uh, maybe dump it to a CSV file right and uh, maybe i can uh, ask 
someone else to pick this information and feed it to another system. If I have to maybe show something similar, maybe you have to parse um, JQL, right? So if we parse JQL, because we, we, may, we may need to basically fetch the the, 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 the the list of issues. So when you parse a JQL, you just need to parse in, uh, basically I'm doing the same thing here. For example, right now, my JQL is based on a filter, which is uh, filter 10047. Let us uh, open Jira and take a look at this filter. So if I go to my issue navigator, let us do that very quickly. Come on, don't be slow. Jira, Jira Cloud is not really that fast, right? And it can be annoying, but it's okay. We'll live with it. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to fetch the list of issues and um, let me just type in this JQL uh, filter is equal to one zero zero one zero zero four seven, right? What? There is no filter with this uh, URL, really? Okay. Uh, but I was able to return something, and I'm using the right um, right URL. Okay, let me write uh, another jQL. Project is equal to Android, right? So hopefully we'll have something. And uh, we will then use this uh, filter to fetch the list of issues in this project. But maybe not all the issues because there are like 296 issues. Maybe the issues uh, were uh, and status is do we have done in this project I, i'm basically looking for 10 15 issues okay 17 and maybe bug okay let us filter it further and issue type is equal to bug so we can of course pass in the same jql in our script but i prefer to save it as a filter and then use the filter Android done bugs. Okay, so we have this filter now, which is one zero one zero three. Let us one zero one zero three. So let us uh, run this uh, this script and let us see what we get. So we'll run the the script, which is uh, parse jql right and if i run this oh it will cannot iterate over null okay something is wrong with the script i have to check here parse jql is a script let me just try to use the old filter maybe i need to share something okay we have we do have something maybe the filter is uh, oh okay so I think I need to probably uh, share it with other users. Yeah, so we are doing live troubleshooting permissions. And uh, who can view? Mm, my organization. Add, save, and the filter is 100. 101103. Yeah, I think it was probably the, um, it was definitely the, the uh, permission. So what I'm also doing in the script, I am also dumping this information to a temp file. So let us take a look at the temp file and uh, let us um, see. So we can go to the directory, which is temp and uh, temp.csv. Perfect. So we have this list here, which is basically the same list, right? And uh, this is great because uh, we are now able to fetch this information using a script in a 
file uh, using just a simple shell script. So what I wanted to sh share today is, and by the way, I've shown this before, uh, but I'm just making a video again today just to show you the capability of uh, REST API, but even, uh, I mean, more than REST API, how to, how to interact with REST API. And my personal favorite is uh, curl. Now, good thing about uh, because when you write a program, when you write a code in in a programming language, you are basically limited by or you, you have some constraints because where exactly will you run that particular code? Usually, when you are doing these things, you have to run these things on a server. And uh, if you're working for an organization, they might not even allow you allow you to maybe install PHP or maybe Python or whatever package that you or whatever language that you are using. But shell script will work in almost all the cases. For example, to run this command, we definitely definitely need curl. Curl is usually installed to be honest, but of course your URL, your Jira URL should be accessible from that server. So they, if there is no issue with the firewall, uh, then it should work. You are, might also need to worry about the certificates, uh, but usually that is not really a big problem. Uh, and for uh, parsing, you might need JQ. So JQ is usually there, usually uh, on servers, depending upon you know which distribution. I mean, if you are using CentOS, there is no guarantee, but you know it is much easier to convince your Linux admin to install JQ than PHP, right? And uh, if you are a system admin, then, I, then I'm sure uh, you know this. So talking about skill, what skill you can think of acquiring, learn how to interact with Jira using REST API. So learn about different endpoints, how to pass the body, how to fetch things. And at the same time, uh, um, do it using uh, curl. Because if you can do it using curl, you can do it from any language. The, the main thing to figure out here is how to authenticate. And don't ask me how to create the token. I've made, I don't know how many videos. <laughs> so you, you can, uh, you, once you have the token with you, and by the way, in this particular script, I'm using uh, an environment variable, which I prefer because, you know, um, I don't have to expose the token here in the script. When the script runs, it will pick up the environment variable from my environment and uh, it will authenticate. So you have to ensure you know the authentication, how to auth authenticate, you know what endpoint you have to pass, what arguments you have to pass, uh, how to handle the, the, the JSON that you will get back. And then, so w once you do it, uh, maybe once you dump the information to a CSV or maybe a simple, uh, I don't know, JSON file, it could be whatever. But let us say you have a CSV file. CSV file is like text file, right? Anyone can read it. And anyone and any, any when I say anyone, anyone can uh, use any tool to read CSV. You can also open it in Excel and create those wonderful, beautiful pivot tables, which I don't like. But yeah, some people do live, do live their life in Excel sheets. So this is like my uh, my my first option when it comes to fetching things and interacting with Jira. And uh, it's a very good skill to acquire. All right, that is all. A bit long video, but yeah, we have learned something wonderful today. All right. Bye-bye.